Opening Credits Cooking on a Budget Written by Jay Steele Narrated by Rania Elway and Saleh Steele Cooking on a Budget By Jay Steele Cooking on a Budget Disclaimer Reasonable care has been taken to ensure that the information presented in this book is accurate. However, the reader should understand that the information provided does not constitute legal, medical or professional advice of any kind. No liability. This product is supplied as is and without warranties. All warranties, express or implied, are hereby disclaimed. Use of this product constitutes acceptance of the no-liability policy. If you do not agree with this policy, you are not permitted to use or distribute this product. Neither the author, the publisher, nor the distributor of this material shall be liable for any losses or damages whatsoever, including, without limitation, consequential loss or damage, directly or indirectly arising from the use of this product. Use at your own risk. Note, publisher may receive affiliate commissions for products advertised within this ebook. Contents Baking on a budget Batch cooking to save money Breakfast on a budget Cook a whole meal for less than $10 Feeding a family of four on a budget Fund recipes to cook with the kids to save time and money how bulk buying saves you money. Inexpensive alternatives to stretching your food budget. Saving money on groceries with the internet. Baking on a budget. Do you love sweets? Has the economy made it more difficult for you to feel that sweet tooth craving? You might have to stop buying your cookies from the bakery but you can still enjoy those sweets by baking them yourself. Here are some tips to bake on a budget while also making your sweets taste and look professional. Buy in bulk. Get ingredients like cocoa powder, rolled oats, flaked coconut, nuts and spices in bulk. These ingredients are easy to store. Don't be afraid to use things that are about to spoil. Do you have some bananas which are past their edible state? Use them in some banana bread. Do you have some leftover cooked rice? Turn it into rice pudding. Even leftover mashed potatoes can be used in your baking by making potato fudge. If you have bananas about to turn, but don't want to make banana bread or muffins, then freeze the bananas, peel and all, so you can use them for baking in the future. Use your pantry. Just the basics from your pantry can be transformed into a great sweet treat. With some peanut butter and brown sugar, you have the basis for a peanut butter cake. Add some oats, flour, baking soda, shortening, egg, vanilla and chocolate chips and you've got what you need. Or how about some peanut butter cookies that don't even need flour? Just add some egg and vanilla and you've got a simple peanut butter cookie. Do you have some canned pineapple and some raw carrots? Then you can make a pineapple carrot cake. If you don't have buttermilk for a recipe, just make your own sour milk by pouring a tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar in a cup of regular milk. Let it sit for a few minutes. It's the perfect substitution for buttermilk. Check online for more substitutions when you're missing an ingredient. Save energy. If you don't need a huge amount of cookies, then use the toaster oven instead of your oven to bake it in. It uses much less energy. On the other hand, baking in bulk and freezing for later can be energy efficient too. Do all of your baking at once and have dessert from freezer for months to come. Use seasonal foods. During the fall and winter months, when apples are in season, use them in your baking. Don't forget that pumpkin. You can get a lot of tasty sweet treats in the fall and winter out of pumpkin. In the summer, 
adding strawberries to things makes for a tasty treat. An angel food cake with strawberries is divine. Think strawberry shortcake even. Baking on a budget can really be quite simple. It's so easy to save by doing all of your own home baking too. And don't think that just because you haven't been able to bake before that, you can't now. The more you do it, the better you get. It's like anything else that is learned. Practice makes perfect. So keep trying. You just might find that you can make some really sweet treats. Batch cooking to save money. Batch cooking is becoming very popular. It's a great way to have healthy meals when you're short on time during the week because of work. It also means you don't have to eat out all the time, which saves you money. But cooking in large batches in and of itself is a great money saver. So if you're looking for more ways to save on your food budget, then here's how to do it with batch cooking. What is batch cooking? You might be wondering what batch cooking actually is. Basically, it's cooking large amounts of food at once to store and freeze for use at a later date. You can do it many different ways depending on what works best for you. If you have a deep freezer and a whole weekend, you could cook up food for the entire month. If you don't want to spend that much time or don't have the storage needed for that kind of batch cooking, then cooking in advance for the week might be a better alternative for you. How to cook in batches Cooking large amount of food to freeze can seem overwhelming. If you set aside a whole day, it's doable. Just double, triple or quadruple your recipes and place in freezer bags to save room in your freezer. You can also cook up large batches of sauce to freeze and cut it up to freeze to use in meals throughout the week. You don't have to make a whole meal to have throughout the week. Cooking up the basics that you will use in a meal will not only make meals easier to make, but it also saves you money. Jarred sauce is convenient to use in recipes because you don't want to spend the time cooking sauce every time you need it. But if you have some made and frozen in your freezer, it can be cheaper, especially if you have used in season ingredients. When you end up with a whole bunch of tomatoes at the end of the summer, you can cook up a large batch of sauce that could last you all winter long. Whole chickens can generally be bought cheaper than chicken pieces. So cooking up large batches of chicken, shredding it and freezing it to add to meals as needed is a huge money saver, not to mention the time saver. Tips so you aren't wasteful. If your major goal in bulk cooking is to save money, then the one thing you don't want to happen is for the food that you work so hard to cook to go bad. To keep this from happening, here are some tips. Properly wrap your food to prevent freezer bump. Make sure you use a wrap that is meant for the freezer and that as much air as possible has been removed and it is sealed tight. Label the item with what it is as well as the date it was prepared. Foods can last six to nine months in the freezer but you need to label it with how long it has been in there. Do not place piping hot food directly into the freezer. Allow it to cool some before freezing. When reheating, to keep food from drying out, reheat at a slightly lower temperature than what you normally cook it on. Following these steps will ensure that you make the most use out of the food and that it tastes its best. This way you aren't throwing away the food you worked so hard on. Batch cooking can be a real great money saver. You won't be eating out as much because meals on busy days will be so fast and easy. You'll also save money by buying in-season items in bulk. Batch cooking might not be for everyone, but give it a try to see how much money you can save. Breakfast on a Budget 
Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, so you don't want to skip it as a way of saving money. And while cereal might be your go-to breakfast of choice, it can get a little boring and start to add up. If you're looking for budget-friendly breakfast ideas, then try these tips. It's sure to give a little spice to your life while also saving you money. Muffins. This is a great thing to make in bulk, which saves you even more and frees for a quick on-the-go breakfast. There's such a variety of things you can get when it comes to muffins. You can make bran muffins, blueberry muffins, chocolate chip muffins, a fruit and veggie muffin, or a nice pumpkin muffin. Oatmeal. Making oatmeal can literally cost pennies. And with different toppings, you can really change it up from cinnamon and apples to blueberries. Or try peaches and milk or some frozen berries. Make it more appealing for the kids by dressing it up with some chocolate chips or fruit sprinkled on top. Make sure it's a texture the kids will like. If your child likes a mushy cereal, then he'll like the oats fully cooked. For more of a crunch, cook it a little less and cool it down with some milk. Eggs Okay, we know making eggs every morning can be a pain. While they are relatively quick to cook, there's all the hassle of dirty pans. But make an egg bake over the weekend and freeze it, and you have a great inexpensive breakfast in the morning. Scramble some eggs with spinach or peppers and onion, or even some ham and bake it in the oven till set, and you have a perfect yummy egg bake all week long. French toast Okay. Another not-so-great one for the week, maybe. But if you have a loaf of bread that is starting to go hard, then this is a good time to make some French toast. With just eggs, milk and bread, you can't get much cheaper than that. You can top with some fruit or add a little cinnamon to the egg and milk mixture. Granola Make your own granola and it will be much cheaper. Then mix it with a little yogurt or fruit. Just combine rolled oats, oil, honey, vanilla and a little brown sugar. Spread the mixture onto a baking sheet and bake for 30 minutes on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Stir frequently to ensure even baking. It will be golden brown when it's done. Smoothies These can be inexpensive to make because you can toss just about anything into them. Got some berries that are getting a little soft? Toss them into a smoothie. Keep some plain yogurt in your fridge to thicken up these smoothies. Peanut butter toast. This is a filling, quick and easy breakfast. Just add some fruit. Bananas and peanut butter are delicious, by the way. And you have a complete breakfast. So the next time you are looking for an inexpensive breakfast idea, don't reach for the cereal. Try one of these. You won't be disappointed. Do you have any other inexpensive breakfast ideas to add to this list? Cook a whole meal for less than $10. Making meals that are inexpensive is something many families are striving for. Having them taste good or maybe even Restaurant quality, while still not eating a huge hole in your budget, can really be a challenge, though. But it can be done. Here are five tasty meals that can be made for less than $10 each and will feed your whole family. 1. Roast chicken Because you can get a whole chicken for very cheap, this is a perfect meal that seems expensive, but isn't. Just include some potatoes and carrots in the roasting pan with a chicken and you have a whole meal in one pan that won't cost you an arm and a leg. Simply take your roast chicken and season with some salt, pepper, garlic powder and onion powder. Place it in a roasting pan with rack. Surround the chicken with quartered potatoes and some cut up carrots with half a cup of water and place in a preheated 350 degree oven. Allow to cook half an hour per pound of chicken. About half an hour before the chicken is done cooking, pour some chicken broth over it. 
Once done cooking, remove the vegetables from the pan. Mash the potatoes if you like and season with a little salt and pepper. Remove chicken to a cutting board and let stand a few minutes before carving. Meanwhile, use the drippings from the pan to make gravy if desired. And there you have it, a full meal for under $10. 2. Meatloaf This is an American classic that's inexpensive to boot. Pair this with some green beans and egg noodles for a meal that's less than $10. 1 pound ground beef 1 egg 1 third cup ketchup quarter cup water half cup breadcrumbs 1 envelope onion soup mix Mix all of the ingredients together in a large bowl until thoroughly mixed. Place in a loaf pan, put in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes, remove from oven and serve over egg noodles. 3. Slow cooker chicken stew. A nice hearty meal to really fill you up. And it's easy because you can set it to cook all day in the crock pot. 6 pieces boneless skinless chicken thighs cut into strips. 2 tablespoons vegetable oil, 6 red potatoes quartered, 4 cups chicken broth, carrots and peas. Brown chicken on both sides in oil, season with a little salt and pepper, remove to slow cooker, add vegetables and chicken broth to slow cooker and cook on low for 8 hours, high for 4 hours. 4. Chili Here's another hearty meal that won't break the bank but will fill you right up. One onion, one head of garlic, bell pepper, 15 ounces can of black beans, 14 ounces chicken broth, 14 ounces stewed tomatoes, half pound ground turkey. In a large saucepan, heat onion, garlic, pepper, and ground turkey. Cook until turkey is done. About six minutes. Drain the canned beans. Add two turkey with stewed tomatoes and half of the chicken broth. Bring to a boil. Reduce heat and simmer for half an hour. 5. Vegetarian tacos. This is really very simple and basic. To make it more filling, Use beans instead of meat. Just heat a can of beans in a pan with some chipotle pepper. Add your taco shells, salsa, lettuce, tomatoes and cheese and you have a quick and cheap taco dinner for the whole family. So those are just five recipes you can make that won't break the bank. What other meals do you like to make that cost less than $10? Feeding a family of four on a budget. Everyone is looking for a way to save money. The food budget isn't always an area you want to skimp on because it's a real necessity. Plus, eating healthy might not always seem possible to do on a budget. There are ways to feed a family of four on a hundred dollars a week, though. And it doesn't mean giving up healthy eating or some of your favorite foods either. Follow these tips to save money on your food bill. How to feed a family of four on $100 a week. Shop the sales. Follow those weekly sales ads. Look for the places that have the best prices on the things you need. That might mean going to multiple stores to save the most money. Buy in bulk. If you can get a membership to a shopping club, you can save a lot of money on meat. Clip coupons. Be mindful of the coupons you use, though. If you have to buy two of something to save half a dollar on a third item, it might not be the best coupon. Use them in conjunction with sales and when you can use double and triple coupons as well. Buy fruits and vegetables that are in season. We know you love your watermelon. 
but you will pay more for it in the winter than in summer. So stick with the fruits and vegetables that are in season. Name brand doesn't always mean better. Oftentimes, store brand is made in the same factory as the name brand. When you buy name brand, you are paying for the name. The store brand can be just as good as the name brand. Cheaper cuts of meat can still be made to taste good. Buy a whole chicken instead of chicken pieces. Drain fat out of ground meat and rinse it after cooking instead of buying the more expensive lean ground meat. Stretch the meat by adding other sources of nutrition such as mashed up kidney beans, shredded zucchini or whole grain rice to your meal patties. It will make it not only healthier for you, but it will also make the meal last longer. Canned fruits, vegetables and even meats can save you money. Add canned chicken to casseroles and wraps. Use canned vegetables and fruit stored in its own juices when money is tight. These items have a longer shelf life, so you can buy them in bulk. Frozen fruits and vegetables can be just as good as fresh. When you are craving a strawberry shake in the middle of winter and strawberries are not in season, you can use frozen to save you some money. Make soups and stews. These are hearty meals which can be stretched far with a lot of healthy ingredients. Utilize what's in your fridge and your pantry. Revamping your leftovers into another meal with some items from your pantry will help stretch your food that much longer. Don't shop on an empty stomach. And make sure if you have to bring the kids with you that they are well fed as well. Otherwise you might see some high price items sneak into your cart. Following these tips will give you more food for the buck. You really can spend $100 a week to feed a family of four. And best of all, it can be done without sacrificing your health or that of your family. Fun recipes to cook with the kids to save time and money. Cooking with the kids has many benefits. Shocker of shockers, you can even save time and money when you let the kids get involved in cooking. Here are some fun recipes you can cook with the kids that will save you time and money. Homemade pizza. You really can't go wrong with kids when it comes to pizza. Let them put their own toppings on it and they will be more likely to eat it. But why not let them make the whole thing, dough and all? Here's a super easy recipe. Dough. Two and a half cups flour. One teaspoon salt. One cup warm water. One tablespoon yeast. One tablespoon Italian seasoning. One tablespoon oil. Toppings. Pizza sauce, mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, ham, meatballs, sausage, pineapple, pepper, mushrooms, olives. Dissolve yeast in warm water and add a dash of sugar. In a mixing bowl, add salt, flour, Italian seasoning and oil. When yeast is bubbly, pour into flour mixture to make dough. Form into a ball and place in lightly greased bowl. Allow to rise 30 to 60 minutes. Roll out dough on a floured surface and stretch into pizza pan. With multiple children, you can make individual pizzas so they can add the toppings they desire. Spread sauce, cheese and any other toppings over crust and bake in a 450 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes or until cheese bubbles. Potato pierogi. Pierogies are a great kid recipe to make. It teaches them a lot of skills and it's something they enjoy eating. Plus, it's way better to make your own pierogies than to buy them from the store. A huge money savings right here. Pierogi dough. One and a half cup all-purpose flour. Half cup cake flour. One teaspoon salt. Two large eggs. 
one third cup water. Filling three large baking potatoes, peeled and cut into chunks, about four cups. Two tablespoons butter, one cup finely chopped onion, quarter cup sour cream, one cup grated sharp cheddar cheese, three to five tablespoons milk, salt and pepper to taste. Combine the flours and salt in a mixing bowl and make a well in the center. Add the eggs and water using a fork or whisk. Mix just the liquids. Now with a spoon stir the flour into the liquid from the sides of the bowl. When you have made a dough, knead it for 7 to 8 minutes on lightly floured surface with lightly floured hands. Put the dough aside in a bowl covered with a plastic wrap while you prepare the filling. Put the potatoes in a pan with just enough water to cover them. Heat to a boil. Cook 10 minutes until the potatoes are fork tender. Meanwhile, melt butter in a saute pan and add the onion, stirring until it's a light golden brown. Drain the potatoes and transfer them to a large bowl. Add the onion, sour cream, cheddar cheese, 3 tablespoons milk and about quarter teaspoon salt. Mash, adding salt and pepper to taste. If mixture is a little dry, add more milk. Roll dough out very thinly on a lightly floured surface. Cut with 3 inch circle cookie cutter. Place 1 tablespoon of potato filling in center of dough cutouts. Moisture half the edges with a finger dipped in water and fold the moisture end over onto the dry end to seal. Press the edges firmly together. Bring a pot of water to a boil and place pierogies into the boiling water. Let them boil for 7 minutes. Serve with sour cream. Chicken cutlets and fries. Kids love chicken. But you might not be so crazy about having them fried chicken fingers. All that grease spraying everywhere. But baking them like in this recipe is not only healthier, but also not as dangerous for the kids. Two large baking potatoes. Quarter cup zesty Italian dressing. Half cup grated Parmesan cheese divided. One pound boneless chicken breast pounded and cut into strips. Half cup bread crumbs. Heat oven to 425 degrees. Cut potatoes into half inch strips and place in a bowl. Toss with dressing and quarter cup cheese until coated. Spread evenly into a lighter greased baking dish. Bake 12 minutes. Meanwhile, mix breadcrumbs and the rest of the cheese together. Wet chicken and dip in breading mixture. Add the chicken to the baking dish with potatoes. Turn the potatoes. Bake 15 minutes or until the potatoes are tender and the chicken is done. Serve with your favorite dipping sauce. These recipes are all great to get kids cooking with you and to save money. It's all stuff they'll love so they will not be throwing any food away, especially since they help make it. What are your favorite recipes to cook with kids? How bulk buying saves you money. Buying in bulk can be a real money saver, but you do have to be careful. If you have a wholesale club membership, you might find you spend a lot of money. And while some things can be a really great buy, Others are not so good. So make sure you watch those unit prices when you are shopping for bulk. You also want to make sure you have the storage and will use things before their expiration date. If you are a family of just two, buying 15 boxes of cereal because there's a buy one get two free sale might not be the best idea. Because are you really going to get through those boxes of cereal before they go bad? Do you have room in your freezer? If you have an extra freezer, then buying meat in bulk can definitely be cost effective. The family packs generally are cheaper per pound, but you likely want to split up the packs into smaller serving sizes before freezing. You'll need plenty of freezer space to hold everything. 
Here are 10 items that it's worthwhile to buy in bulk and how to make them last longer. 1. Cereal Okay, we know we said above that buying more than you can eat is a bad idea. But the truth of the matter is, when you find a deal on cereal, you should go for it. Just make sure you use a clip to seal the bag closed after it has been opened. Or have some handy Tupperware type containers to store the cereal in. Use something airtight to keep it from going stale. 2. Foil and wraps. You know this is never going to go bad, and you will use this for storing things. 3. Paper goods. This is another thing that doesn't have an expiration date and that you get plenty of use out of it. Bulk toilet paper purchases and paper towels are especially good value. Watch those unit prices to make sure you're getting the most bang of your buck. The 1000 roll of toilet paper is a better buy than the Charmin. And no, you don't have to sacrifice comfort for price. 4. Toothpaste and toothbrushes You want to keep your teeth healthy, and a great way to do that is with plenty of dental care products. Never worry about running out of toothpaste again when you buy this in bulk. 5. Alcohol Now, not to encourage over-drinking, but when you are having a lot of company over, you'll be happy for a well-stocked bar, that's for sure. Buying larger amounts of vodka is just cheaper per ounce, and it's not going to go bad as long as it's stored correctly. 6. Batteries Everything requires batteries, especially those annoying kid toys. As great as it might be to say a toy is broken once the battery dies, if you want to avoid the waterworks and be the hero, then having a good stock of batteries on hand is helpful. And it's cheaper in the long run to buy the larger packs of batteries than the individual packs. Store them in a cool place to maximize shelf life. 7. Dried beans and pasta. Pasta can last up to two years in a sealed container and beans can last up to a year. So this makes the perfect bulk pantry staple to purchase. Keep them sealed in an airtight container. Make sure to label everything with dates so you know what to use first. 8. Canned goods Most things in a can have a long shelf life, so stock up on canned vegetables, soups or tuna. Another good thing to keep in your pantry and buy in bulk is rice. White rice can last up to a year, but brown rice only lasts about 6 months so be mindful of that in your purchases. 9. Soap and shampoo This is another thing that won't go bad and that you always need. If you have the room to store it, then buying soap and shampoo in bulk is a great money saver. 10. Meat Buy meat in bulk and store in the freezer in an airtight freezer bag. Date it so you know when you froze it. Chicken and meat are cheaper per pound the more you buy. Buying in bulk can be a real money saver, but it only works if you have the space to store it and if you store things correctly. Nothing is worse than buying a huge bag of cereal and having it go stale because it wasn't stored properly or losing meat to freezer burn because you left it in the freezer too long and not properly sealed. If you keep everything sealed airtight, then you will find that food dollar stretching further by buying in bulk. Inexpensive alternatives to stretching your food budget. Cooking on a budget doesn't mean you have to say so long to your favorite dishes. You can still eat your favorite foods with just a little modification to make them less expensive. Here is a list of great substitutes to help stretch your food budget. 1. Eggplant Come on, you know, you love eggplant parmesan. This meaty vegetable lends itself well to pasta dishes and stir-fries. 2. Mushrooms 
These are a very versatile meat substitute and recipes you're trying to make cheaper. As a base for a veggie burger or just a portobello burger, they taste divine. Use them in enchiladas or casseroles and many stews too. They take on the flavor of other things which is what make them a great and cheap substitute. 3. Beans Beans Beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you save. Stews, soups, chili and salads Beans are a perfect protein substitute in many dishes. They are healthy and very cost-effective. 4. Imitation Vanilla Do you bake? Here's a little known secret. You don't need to get real vanilla, which can be a rather costly ingredient in baking. Imitation Vanilla does not alter the taste of recipes and you can get it at a fraction of the cost. 5. Cooking wine. This is a perfect and cheaper substitution to wine and recipes. Unless you know you'll drink that Chardonnay with dinner. Then purchasing cooking wine is the way to go. Or for an even cheaper alternative, and one that appeals to some recovering alcoholics, use chicken broth, something you also might have on hand when a recipe calls for wine. 6. Pork in place of veal. Pork doesn't taste all that different from veal and is much cheaper. Chicken can be used as a substitute in veal recipes as well. 7. Steak. Wouldn't you love a nice cob steak? Sure, we all would. But alas, that's not a budget-friendly food. That doesn't mean you can't find a good cut of meat though. Try a USDA prime beef, or if that's still too expensive, a choice graded cut of meat will do. The key is to find one with a good marbling to get that cold beef texture that's so sought after. 8. Fish When it comes to fish, it can be pricey. There are cheaper alternatives which taste the same and are easily interchangeable in recipes. For tuna... Try yellowfin tuna instead of Atlantic bluefin tuna. Love that chili and sea base? But not the price? Then try an Alaskan sable fish instead. Pacific cod is cheaper than Atlantic cod and just as flaky. So it's easy to make that switch. When in doubt, ask your local grocery seafood clerk. He can usually tell you what a good less expensive substitute is for different kinds of fish. 9. Yogurt In place of sour cream, try plain yogurt instead. Not only is it cheaper, but it's healthier for you too. There are lots of great probiotics in yogurt. 10. Imitation buttermilk Need buttermilk? Just add one tablespoon of white vinegar or lemon juice to every cup of milk. Let it sit for about 5 minutes to ferment. These 10 ingredient substitutions will really help your food budget stretch further. You really don't even have to sacrifice taste for inexpensive ingredients. In most instances, no one will know the difference unless you tell them. What are your favorite ingredient substitutes? Saving money on groceries with the Internet. We use the Internet for everything these days. And now with smartphones keeping the internet with us at all times. There are plenty of ways we can use the internet to save on our grocery shopping. Here are the top 5 apps for saving money on groceries. 1. Zip list. We need a list to go grocery shopping, correct? Well, we should have one. That right there is a huge money saver. Getting only what you do need and nothing you don't. But keeping up with the list or remembering to bring the list with you is always my downfall. I do always have my phone though. And with zip list, all of my list making troubles are over. Not only is this great at keeping your recipes all in one place, but it can help you create a shopping list with the items you need. 
It can even organize your list based on the layout of your store. What better way to keep those impulse buys at bay? 2. Weekly ads and sales This app is great for more than just your grocery shopping. Really, it's no wonder that newspapers are struggling so mightily in this information age. This takes away the need for your weekly Sunday paper. You can get all of your local store's weekly sales and deals right there on your phone. This way, you can decide where the best place to shop for what you need is right at the touch of your finger. 3. Grocery IQ This is another grocery list which allows you to check off things as you go. You can completely customize and sort your list. You can even use your phone to scan the barcode to add things to your list. But on top of that, you can also find coupons for the items on your list. No more forgetting your coupons when you go shopping. 4. Saving Star This is more ways to get coupons. Saving Star will take all of your store's loyalty cards and store them and give you exclusive savings on the items you purchase. You can get e-coupons to use. No more coupon clipping with this app at the ready. Beyond that, you get savings when you shop online at places like Groupon, Travelocity, Lenzen.com and ProFlowers. 5. Cellfire This is might be the perfect app for everyone. There's really nothing for you to do. It will alert you to special savings as soon as you walk into a store and automatically loads coupon savings onto your loyalty card so you no longer have to worry about those coupons. It's just that easy to save money on the things you buy. This will even work at restaurants, department stores and entertainment as well. Grocery shopping has really gotten much easier with all of these great coupon apps you can add to your phone. And you'll never forget your list again. With your list stored into these apps, it will make it that much easier to remember all of the ingredients you need to make your favorite recipes. Saving money using the internet has become so much easier. Aside from using your phone and apps, don't forget that a Google search will often reveal helpful coupons and where the best sales are. So make the internet a part of your weekly grocery shopping. It will not only save you time, but it will also save you money. The End Closing Credits Cooking on a Budget Written by Jay Steele Narrated by Rania Elway and Saleh Steele Copyright 2020 by Jay Steele